Um, hello and welcome everyone to uh, Fugitive Words, a seminar series of the India's Politics in its Vernaculars project. Um, today we have the pleasure of having Francesca Orsini with us. Francesca is a member of our research team and a distinguished scholar of um, literary history in India. She has worked primarily with Hindi and Urdu materials and more recently has been um, working on multilingualism. Uh, Francesca has recently explored English and uh, as part of the project she will be working at humor, at satire, um, something that she will start talking about today. So welcome Francesca and pleasure. Thank you very thank you very much. I hope you can all hear me well and let me start sharing my screen and also thank first of all thank uh, um, Anastasia for her patience because I've been uh, postponing my seminar and asking for more time and more time and this is very much a kind of preliminary yeah a sort of a beginning I think um, we uh, probably come we come uh, also with Vinit uh, Kumar who is also here and who's, who's uh, contributed a great paper on uh, political advertising in uh, on radio uh, fm radio in our forthcoming book on english which is coming out with orion black swan anytime i think i co-edited by ravi kant and me um and i think probably in the course of the project i would focus more on the contemporary but as a start because this is really the beginning um although in fact i think and again i think we think more of uh, when we think of comedy or satire, we think very much of this contemporary moment. Uh, you know, it was a 2017, a breakthrough year. Now, perhaps more, uh, of course, more uh, um, uh, difficult and in fact, a sort of risky, risky business. But certainly it's a sort of boom period for satire right now. And it's a satire that, um, that di directly sort of challenges and hits uh, uh, the BJP government. But as I say, I wanted to start today from an earlier period and so to get to the contemporary in the course of the project um, from, you know, from this longer genealogy. And as I say, this is really the beginning. So I, I very much welcome any kind of suggestion from, you know, what to focus on, what I haven't thought about uh, and so on and so forth. So let me start. So it'd be broader and then I'll focus on a particular sort of set of te a particular text. Um, so I would say, and I don't know if it's true of other, you know, repertoires of literature, that in Hindi you have mostly three paradigms of writing about politics. One is the heroic paradigm, uh, which starts in the colonial uh, nationalist period, uh, which is all about seva, tiag, you know, there's the sort of either the individual shahid or, you know, the, the movement, the janandolan, and everybody ready to give, you know, qurbani, to sacrifice themselves. And this is a paradigm which, um, you know, gets invoked um, consciously or unconsciously, I think for, you know, has been invoked ever since. Um, the other paradigm in, in um, uh, writing about politics is what I call the Dharma Sankat paradigm, you know, of, uh, not so much Dharma, but really the, the, the dilemma, hmm? often through, um, you know, mythology or the epics, retellings of, uh, um, the Ramayana, the Mahabharat, other Puranic characters. And, and often the plots revolve around um, conflicting demands and responsibilities. And they're about paradigmatic in what are seen as paradigmatic in the Indian values, behavior, you know, of course, the, um, the necessary or rightful use of violence or submission and so on. Um, and we've seen, you know, across a, a range of forms, so novels, serials, films, um, and, and, and as we know, it's actually very interesting that, and, and people have started writing about it, that the, you know, the, the beginning of the millennium has seen an absolute boom in mythological kind of cultural production, not just the older serial, but also um, novels and sci-fi and all of that. Um, I would say that the third paradigm is, and, and possibly the main paradigm in, in literary uh, Hindi is that of, of satire. And of course, we, we think about satire uh, in the context of colonial India, uh, where with the, you know, great, again, boom 
uh, of satirical uh, newspapers, cartoons, all kinds of genres of, uh, of satire, plays, poems, and so on, uh, which took aims at colonial policies and impositions, but also a kind of self-satire at the anglicized Babu or Bibi. And my student, Mariam Sikanda, has just finished a really brilliant PhD on um, Avat Panch. In newly independent India, um, sorry, right. um, party activists and leaders, mostly Congress, but not just, very quickly become the butt of satire, either because they are portrayed as you know, hapless or because of their kind of petty factionalism or their double speak, you know, the rhetoric of Seva and Tiag and, and their greed and so on. So that it's interesting that, you know, perhaps for what for me are the no two novels, or some of the novels that sort of capture really the, um, the you know, Indian modernity shifting and shifts uh, in the 40s and 50s, the novels by Fanishwanath Renu, Mela Anchal and Parthi Parikata, politicians there are really already but of uh, you know, humor and satire, whether they are Congress, whether they are socialist um, and so on. Um, the most famous, uh, and, and I'm sure that some of you will know it uh, already, uh, Hindi novel of political satire is Rag Darbari, uh, published in 1968 by Shilar Shukla, um, which is written so in the early years of Indira Gandhi's government with a Congress rule uncontested, but very much written with factions. And, and, and the novel, which is written in a kind of um, um, pretty constant uh, high register of Hindi, you know, really kind of uh, uses this high register of Hindi official rhetoric, you know, the development of state and everything, but really to, 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 to puncture it uh, and to measure the gap between uh, that, um, uh, that rhetoric and politics as it works on the, on the ground. So it's very much, I think, you know, a novel about the everyday state, um, you know, written, you know, in 1968, um, so, so really early on, and I, you know, would urge anybody to, to read it, it's great fun. Um, and the, the, the sort of the main uh, mover and shaker is uh, um, uh, Vedyaji, who is the uncle of the narrator, and his two sons, uh, a kind of the more wily youth neta, Rupan Babu, a Pedaishi neta, or a neta by birth, birthright, and his bony, brawny brother, Badri Pelvan. And they control, Vedyaji controls the village panchayat, the panchaya, the village cooperative. Uh, the local college man management committee. He controls everything, and he was uh, he was an operator during colonial times, and he's an operator now. Um, the narrator is instead a young MA graduate in history, uh, Ranganath, who comes after his exams to to rest in the village. And what, although we, although he's the narrator, um, you know. He's a, he's a, he really remains a marginal character. And what to him are aberrations. So elections are rigged, uh, you know, uh, things are not done by protocol by, by through either kind of um, connections or muscle power. And rhetoric allows you to say you one thing and it's opposite in the same breath, depending on who you are, you know, the occasion and who you're talking on and so forth. Uh, as I say, his uncle Vedyaji has managed successfully the transition from colonial rule to independent state and combines uh, rhetorical skills like here and also making fun of the fact that, you know, he has this um, you know, renunciant politician uh, typical spiel about, you know, he doesn't want power. He's just been you know, offering his service to, uh, you know, uh, even more skilled performances about why factionalism is no bad thing is really already there in Vedanta and every I sees every thou and every thou sees every I in a position better so that they want to become one and capture each other's position. So, you know, he, he, he has a, he's very rhetorically skilled, but he's also kind of masters the dynamics and social relationships that oil the everyday state. Um, and as I said, the novel employs this language of state development, democracy, and Jan Seva to reveal the gap between uh, rhetoric and reality on the ground. Um, and in fact, um, so, um, you know, 
and I think one of the interesting things that uh, Drag Dalbari does already is that it shows that, you know, rather than, you know, we could read it that, okay, this is politics on the ground in the village, whereas politics uh, at the center or at the top is, uh, you know, works by parliamentary rules and democratic rules and so on. Whereas the novel makes very strongly uh, the, the case or that, you know, this is politics. Uh, and so Shilpal Ganj is not an aberration, is not a different level in the Congress system, but it is the Congress system or it is, you know, the system of politics. Now, uh, just to give you again a, a brief um, overview of, of uh, all right, oh, sorry, something wrong happened here. Um, sorry, something wrong happened there. Um, well, I just wanted to see, uh, right, never mind. Mm, so in the 1970s, um, or actually most, most political satire, so these are novels, but in fact, most political satire in Hindi uh, takes the form of short sketches, typically written for newspaper readers. And in fact, I wanted to show you I'm, I'm something wrong with the slide. There's a, a, a genre, which I don't know if it's there in other Indian languages, called the lagu kata, kata. So tiny, you know, if you if you have in mind mantos, um, tsiahashie, you know, those sort of very tiny, three, four, five epigrammatic stories. And, um, and it's an interesting genre, which really flourished in the 1970s and has, you know, still chugs along. There are uh, digital sites uh, devoted to La Gucata and there are people who specialize, there are magazines of La Gucata, but I think it was really a 1970s uh, genre. And the interesting thing is it's a very democratic one. Uh, so there are some pretty famous writers like Asghar Vajahat, uh, in fact, his book Democracia is, is a kind of, you know, made of La Gucata's short stories about, again, the evils of the you know, the ills of the democracy, but um, it's a genre that a lot of people write. Right? It's a kind of anybody can write in La Cucata, and it was part of the newspaper, you know, fill, little fillers here and there in um, on so part of print culture. Um, or another very famous writer of sketches, Harishankar Pasai, also in the 1970s. Now, if in the mytho heroic and mythological paradigm, heroic paradigm and the mythological paradigm, the neta is selfless, self sacrificing leader of high principles, heroic in action, a model of behavior. Of course, in, sat in satirical writing, the neta is, or netaji is, is the opposite. Hmm? He's wily, unscrupulous, and endlessly plotting. And as I wrote in my abstract, although Netaji is, you know, Subhash Chandra Bose, or in Hindi politics, Mulayam Singh Yado, more recently, Netaji is, you know, ironically is a term that you, I'm sure as you all know, you know, you would give to sort of anybody who either, you know, talks, uh, talks big or talks politics all the time, or a fixer. Hmm? So somebody who's uh, um, working to, um, you know, to, to Kam Karana, as, as we will see. And as Manish Thakur, who's written the entry on Neta in the, um, you know, the, the, uh, the book of you know, 20, 21st century, uh, what is it, the, the vocabulary, you know, the, the keywords, uh, he says that the Neta exhibits a range of connotations from respect, respect to parody. And it really ranges from those who are Neta, who are leader, who are VIP seems to be a kind of a <coughs> synonym of Neta for in that, that, uh, in that sense. Huh? Um, while others are still, you know, other Netas are still striving and um, effectively, Taku notes, uh, Neta means someone who can mobilize others on an issue or behind the scenes uh, or on an issue or a set of issues, or as I would say, who can get things done. Uh, and as you've heard, I, I've already said, you know, it's so interesting, you know, this use of the causative, karana, dilvana, um, and, and I'll come back to that a little bit. Now, um, yeah, so what I'm, uh, the, the text I'm going to um, sort of focus on today is also a series of sketches that appeared, I think, in Saptahik Hindustan, the in Hindi version of the, uh, Illustrated Weekly of India in the very, very early 80s, written by Manohar Sham Joshi, who then worked at one of the Times of India um, 
newspapers and also wrote in magazines. He also interestingly wrote um, one of was one of the writers for the first uh, soaps, uh, so Vineyard. <coughs> but he was also, I mean, a, a noted uh, not just uh, writer of Vyangya, so of, of humor and satire, but also of um, often satirical novels, for which one of which he won the Society Academy. And uh, Netaji Kahin, uh, Netaji said. Um, was serialized, um, made into a TV serial by Basu Chatterjee in 88 with Om Puri as Netaji. And you can see that the Dutch Kamal uh, sort of um, uh, paperback actually has a, uh, I mean, Netaji in the, in, the, in the sketches is a young, youthful, or youthful anyway, would-be leader, whereas uh, this is a kind of, a, yeah, old Neta uh, picture. So, um why yeah so in in so maybe before i get there sorry um so in these sketches uh, which then got published as a book netaji is a fixer a chutbaya bhaya a sort of small time uh, politician uh, who gets things done uh, or he calls himself also the chamcha in chief uh, so the the sort of the uh, sidekick in chief of uh, his political guruji um, so he has his eyes on uh, a ticket for the next general elections, but he bides his time. He's kind of, he thinks of himself as a modest guy. Uh, his target, uh, he's, he's a sort of speaks uh, English a lot of the time. His target, his target is only one crore rupees. Uh, this is the early eighties, enough for Ras and Pani, uh, so Russian and Pani, and to settle in life, or as he puts in a joke, you know, to have Three generate to settle with Rasan Pani for three generations uh, who will give Tarpan to him. Um, now, um, and, and the sketches consist of you know, dialogues between uh, Kakaji of Kakaji, uh, who is a kind of alter ego of, um, of Mano Hashan Joshi, and there's a Kakiji who's a lecturer in something like Miranda House. Uh, Delhi College in Delhi, and um, and the younger. Huh? So I'm not sure. Ompuri looked, um, you know, he was a young, really a young young person. But um, in the sketches, this is a sort of would be coming Netaji. Now, why focus? Uh, why satire? Why focus on satire? Why could it be useful for a project? So, well, as we've seen already, because satire. Um, theorizes uh, or, or kind of or thematizes the gap or the difference between democratic politics uh, and the state as a sublime impersonal set of institutions, abstract ideals, and the real everyday politics, which I think is one of the goals of our project. Um, and and in, we, we may observe that you know this uh, form of the sketch, uh, in the dialogue form of the sketches, You've, you have this just a position between the naive narrator who expresses surprise that, oh, is this how it works? I mean, but this is, you know, opportunism, this is corruption, this is Hera Peri. And uh, the fixers, uh, and the fixers who, uh, you know, instead explain how uh, democracy works and how politics works. Um, another reason why I think. I think it's useful or interesting to focus on satire is that, of course, it pays a lot of attention, as we will see, and as I'll try to, to sort of uh, also convey, um, it pays a great deal of attention to language, uh, including bodily language, gestures, and behavior of political actors and, and, and transactions. Of course, magnifying them through parody and, and irony. So Netaji, um, for example, wears the then youth leader uniform. He has a Kadi vest, a Kadi Ganji with deep pockets, uh, a, kurta, a Kadi Kurta and trousers, and a uh, Nehru jacket and Kolapuri chatpad. Kakaji, uh, the narrator, speaks in standard Hindi and English, whereas Netaji's language is rustic, kind of, you know, this Avdhi uh, sliding into Bhojpuri, and very eclectic, often, in fact, mixing uh, the sort of Avadhi mixed Hindi uh, with, um, with English, English, strongly accented Indian English, and so on. I will, we will see how, how, how it works. And in fact, again, uh, we might want to think about why his key political terms and phrases are all in English or, or English, as we shall see. 
um, and I would say, I would argue perhaps uh, um, start with that the use of English, of course, makes him a butt of humor, uh, of Abadian English, a butt of humor, but also underscores this kind of confidence uh, and ambition. Uh, in fact, he's at home everywhere. The third reason why it's interesting to focus on, on satire and humor is that uh, of the kind of unstable position uh, and, and the role of laughter, which is also what, something I want to focus on today. In fact, one of Netaji's signature body gestures is laughter, and he has a whole range uh, as the narrator uh, sort of details. And making people laugh, of course, is part of his political repertoire. Though less to score a political point, so it's not really derisive laughter to, you know, to belittle an opponent, but more to, as he would put it, atmosphere friendly rake kachahi. Huh? So to keep the atmosphere friendly. And, interest, and, and I would say that start, we start quite clearly laughing at Netaji and his antiques, his, his language and so on. And we end up thinking that it is Netaji who is laughing at us or you're having the last laugh. Uh, so an unstable uh, uh, sort of set of positions. Okay, right. Uh, so as I say, Netaji thinks of himself still as a chudbhaya. Hmm? Uh, he has been offered various nokris by his neta, the netas he worked for, but has never stick to any. So he hopes that instead by keeping so, but keeping company with important people, he will become one day important himself. He says it's people like him who make it in politics. Uh, and, but even if he does not become important, he will earn enough. One of the basic distinctions he makes is between boarding, risk averse, kiru level, middle class people, and a life of hard work, ambition, risk, and high living. So a kiru is somebody who works, who waits for their salary on the first of the month. And in between, kisina kisi line me karera dehe. Whereas a person, so is a person enveloped, you know, if you are enveloped in my amour, then you are reborn as a kiru. If you are, uh, have some uh, uh, appetite for risk, then you are reborn as a businessman, but one who lives with his uh, safa band, no, his kafan band, he is uh, reborn as a neta. Huh? So a neta is a kind of risk, risk taker. Um, Kind of being. At the same time, uh, so he emphasized, Netaji emphasizes that it is his hard work, his mehnat mashakkat, his mahinat masakkat, uh, that sort of, uh, that, well, that, that doing that, uh, what he does is hard work and it entails working long hours. He sets off, you know, um, sees off bigger natas to the airport late at night or has this breakfast diplomacy meetings. Um, and when uh, Kakaji asks him how he will hit his target of one crore, he says, Hmm? So, you know, why do you ask me how and why? Uh, I'll do it, you know, as, 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 as one earns money uh, by, by door doop, door doop uh, by, by sort of running around, by, by, by hard work. Um, by comparison, he says the rewards, he calls the rewards he gets sort of with minimal terms. They are dihari, uh, daily wages. They are basic subsistence, rasan pani. He only earns 2% kamisangiri, uh, so 2% commission. So they may char pese banalene ka ausar, uh, a, a little travel here and there. Uh, so he, he sort of downplays what he, what he gets. The services he offers, uh, or the work he does, is, gen is this generically calm karana, which goes from railway reservations, hospital treatments, stopping or arranging for job transfer, finding jobs, 
So there's a, you know, a, a family gathering and everybody's telling him their request and he fills his pockets with this parchis, small bits of paper with, um, uh, with their requests. And then he, he, um, the, and, and he's quite proud to saying, of saying that, um, uh, so, and calm is, is very generic. Huh? So people remember, after God, people remember me. Huh? If there's anything, any, any uh, transaction, any task, any, anything that gets stuck, uh, they remember me. The terminology, so for, for, for the work he does, the services is all Trade, trade terminology, and also very transactional, and combines trade with spiritual following. So clients are called asami, or bhagats once they offer gifts, uh, which are also kind of uh, very clearly uh, classified uh, in terms of the level of gifts. Deals are soda suluf, um, used a, and, and it's all about euphemism. Uh, so two bigger natas squeeze lemon, nimbu di hen, but in different ways. One does so after receiving an order from above and takes only a percentage, only enough shikanji, sikanji lemonade for himself before giving the rest to the shicharan of those above him. Whereas the other likes to keep the shikanji for himself, but tends to delay. Tariffs for kam karana depend on how mota, tagra, um, how hefty an Asami a client is, but Netaji will also undertake tasks for relatives at family gatherings. Huh? As, he, as he says, you know, uh, in politics, all this Natak is, all this uh, theater play act is, is necessary. So you have to do some work for free, for like for the relatives, Kherat, for charity. Uh, so in order to get uh, fame, Sohrat, Shohrat, and publicity. But Assamis who assume that jobs will be cheap or who mention the sums of money uh, are very sharply rebuked. Hmm? And in fact, one of his details is Jada detail me jane ki jarurat nahi. So there's no need to go into detail. Huh? So Kam Karana itself is a kind of um, um, euphemism. Huh? Um, and how do you get the favors? How do you get it done? You don't want to, uh, to inquire about. Um, so, as I said, all this, of course, is highly transactional, it's politics, it's business, uh, and what Detaji offers his uncle and us is, is the kind of philosophy or logic or ethics of this politics. Uh, one of them is Khusia Bantna, uh, sharing uh, is key. Satta isliya hai ki Khusia Bante, Khushali Paidakare, so from top to bottom. Um, that's why when Netaji in the first uh, sketch arrives at his uncle's house, um, he keeps the taxi waiting outside with the meter down, um, meter running. And he says, when at the end it is a bhagat who will pay, why not remove the garibi of this garib taxi driver? So sharing is really key at, uh, at all levels. Um, Another principle, as I said, is this, uh, which is itself, again, a euphemism, uh, is this, keep the atmosphere friendly. Atmosphere friendly, rakhe kachahi. So when, for example, um, a calm, a file of, the, of Kakaji is stuck in a government office, apka hua hai, Netaji suggests that he can solve it with 25 rupees. And when uh, Kakaji refuses, uh, um, first, you know, they try meeting the head of the department and nothing happens and there's a long wait. Netaji falls asleep, the narrator explodes in anger, starts, you know, inveighing against laziness, corruption in government offices. And Netaji intervenes saying, Santi, Santi, atmosphere friendly, Rakhe Kachahi. He smiles to the clerk and starts distributing kind of two, two, um, uh, two rupees to 15, you know, very little money. And, and the job is done in no time at all. And he, again, he says, atmosphere friendly, rakhe kachahi, speak sweetly and give whatever is due without heel hujat, so without making a fuss. And the same principle works for when a childhood friend of Kakaji, of the narrator, is in trouble. 
And uh, quite interestingly, this, the text dwells on the distress, on the shame of Kakaji, who is a well-known journalist, and the shame that he feels when he cannot, he has to admit to his friend that he cannot help him. Um, and finally, so Netaji comes to the rescue, uh, is a Sankar Mochan. Um, and and uh, so the, the whole uh, sort of um, fun in the sketch is that the narrator keeps saying that, no, no, my friend, my Bal Saka, my childhood friend is a very upright man. He's a very upright businessman. I can't ask him to pay a bribe and so on to Hera Peri, uh, which means, yeah, uh, sort of exchange, barter, but here yeah, confusion, but here yeah, bribe. But uh, Netaji points out that um, agar kes hai to Hera Peri hui be kari omman. Aur kakka, aam apke balsaka ko jainte hain. Dhande wala admi hai, gaant ke pure hai, aank ke, ke andhe nahi. So if he's a, if he's a, a, a businessman, there's no way that he's not going to know about Hera Peri. And in fact, it turns out he's very happy to pay um, and to meet with a politician who tells him that there are 99.9 chances of his, his calm being done. And as Netaji explains to Kaka, this is not the 99% of science, but of Sodebazi, which means that after the first bribe to get to the 99%, 0.9%, another bride is needed to reach 100% certainty. And the businessman friend readily agrees. And again, the deal is arranged in a friendly atmosphere. Um, right. Um, so at, apart from atmosphere friendly Rake Kachahi, he, Netaji's key political terms are setting and fitting. So setting and fitting. Um, Deals are fit, uh, so deals are fitted, people are set. Mamle fit kiye jate hain, bande sight kiye jate hain. Samjhe aap? So, um, setting means putting one's men in every place. Har jaga apna aami bethane ka naam hai sahi sighting. Rajniti iske bina chalti nahi. Politics cannot work without it. And that means that uh, Prashtabhumi me chalu chamche, so clever sidekicks in the background, full light par neta, the neta in, in full light. And in fact, it takes all kinds of people for a setting. Uh, when Kakaji says, how can an old, you know, but tainted, experienced politician, but tainted one like Netaji Siavar Babu fit with Rajiv Gandhi's young and clean image, um, Netaji says, well, you know, People of all kinds of people are needed in a setting. And in fact, even fiery critics like Kaki, Kaki uh, Kakaji's wife, or Kaka himself could come handy to maintain one's image or to scold dissidents. Eka Durvasa, uh, the sage Durvasa, that's sort of, uh, always angry. Taipiki, har ruling party, uh, har ruling party ko apni sighting mein jarurat rati hai. Sabhi charan jambu khone se image bigarta jo hai. So you have to, you can't just have people who are, um, you know, who are going to sort of be, be very servile to you. Kabhi kisi minister ko chatka de na hoi, kisi afsar ke hadkane ki jarurat pade, khada kar do parliament mein apne hi durvasa ko, suru ho ja beta dhuandhar, aur ka, hamra to image hi bani, jiska ukhri, sasuri ukhri. So, um, having somebody criticize yourself it can be part of your own setting and can actually benefit. Settings are fluid, uh, they shift and change mostly slowly. And Netaji is patiently waiting for his chance in a new setting uh, in which he will fit. And in fact, he says two people are needed in politics, or two peoples are there those who build up settings, uh, setting Jamane Vale and those who tear, tear them down, setting ukar nevan, setting ukar. The opposition and dissidents need setting ukar nevale, but they promptly get dismissed once the opposition gets in power. And in fact, it's only the stupid uh, sort of politicians who uh, give uh, space to setting ukar uh, in their, you know, in their own settings afterwards. Huh? Um, 
whereas the chokat ones, the alert power holders, Satadha, do not share hukapani with setting ukar. And this is why Netaji is full-time, a full-time setting jamao. Huh? So it's one of those, you know, full-time into making a new setting, uh, which means he'll be ready to offer his services just before a new setting is fixed, and which is the most, he says, you get more credit then. Um, right. Um, Kaka and Kaki, and this is part of the dialogue form, as I said, so every time, you know, they're very vociferous in their accusations of Netaji's action, they denounce these views and they walk, you know, with a sort of a sublime state. Huh? Um, and one of Netaji's rhetorical skills is to refuse their definition of terms. When they accuse him of opportunism, Absarbad, he protests that not to grasp an opportunity and Absar is foolish. So it's a story of Prithviraj Chauhan who, you know, took his opportunity and, uh, um, and sort of shot uh, uh, the, the arrow uh, at the time of, I forget the, the name of the, uh, of, you know, the conquest of India. It's a famous story of, of the conquest of India. Um, Honesty, when the honesty in Mandari is not the opposite, but consistent with Hera Peri. Hera Peri ka jitna kaam hai, vachan hi par chalta hai. Because, you know, um, so Hera uh, Peri kind of business is conducted honestly on, on people's worlds. Uh, so you can't do uh, Beimani ka kaam, you have to do it honestly. Um, democracy means that everyone can try to live in a plush minister's koti. Hmm? Are aisi koti mein rehne ke liye hi to democracy aur politics ka sara khel chal raha hai. Aapke layak bhatije samet har nagarik ko samvidhan ye adhikar deta hai ki aisi koti mein rehne ki time maar, try maare. Hmm? So he, everybody can try maarna for this kind of life. Kaki ko is koti me or dhoban ko kaki ke flat me guse ka kosis kare ka chahi is kan is ki nam hai democracy. So democracy is trying, uh, aspiring, uh, and the, of course, not without going into the details. Um, finally, adjusting one's speech according to the language and religion or region of one's interlocutors, so pranam with Hindus, salam with Muslims, good morning with Christians, is democracy ki bhasa. Only, he says, since the boli of Eastern UP and Bihar is the boli of the heartland of politics, it gets, pre it gets preference. Like every good politician, so Netaji is a master of words, and his speech is in fact rich with puns, which are often translingual. So Rajniti, Chalti hai vot se or vot milta hai not se or lati ke chot se samjhe. Huh? So vote, note, and chot. Huh? So politics work with votes, votes you get with notes, and with uh, by hitting people with a lati. Huh? Uh, when small town time neta surround big politicians at a, at a uh, wedding and they're, you know, whispering in their ears, he says, this is Khan frinsing. Huh? So whispering in the Khan, in the, in the ears of the Neta. Uh, he says there are two ways of being in politics. One is Sada Bahar, so ever fresh, ever spring, or Sada Bahar, always out. Huh? So you can choose to be a critic and be always out or to be pliant and to be Sada Bahar or opportunist and be Sada Bahar. Um, and um, Uparwala is God, and Uparwali is Indira Gandhi, Madam. Um, so I'm coming to, yeah, to my last sections, um, which is on laughter. So um, Netaji Kahi contains some moments of plain farce that focus on the Neta's bodies, you know, so the typical elements of farce or magnify their, their traits. So there's a whole so, sort of moment in which uh, he, the narrator sees at a gathering how all the natives seem to be busy scratching themselves in different parts of the body. 
ये सारा सारी बिरादरी खुजली से पीड़ित भी माल, ही मालूम होती हो रही थी अलग अलग नेताओं के अलग अलग जगह खुजली उठी हुई थी खुजली का मानो ऑर्केस्ट्रा सा प्रस्तुत था एंड नेताजी एक्सप्लेन दिस इज द खुजली द इच ऑफ पावर it is uh, in another sketch you have a description of siavar babu the, the big neta who is about to give a speech and one and a half pages about how he clears his throat before before finding where to spit huh? so obviously you know a lot of fast there and and of course and and and, and of course we are su supposed to laugh at netaji's language no and and antiques you could see how they are the language is you know really reproduced very carefully but laughter is also a signature of netaji uh, which uh, i think is something that people remember of umpuri's um, um acting in uh, kakaji kahin in the tv depiction in fact um the narrator distinguishes three la three manners of laughter of netaji one the kahaka the loud full throated uh, laughter that that is usually used to clinch a particularly good point or to underscore conviviality and often you know it's accompanied by a, a, a sort of a, a forceful slap uh, and it's defined as you say here as a kind of kabeli vijaynad mixed with the kiki sound of a small town girl giggle of a small town girl he also has a, a, a short a, a sort of shorter hinhinahat uh, so like a horse neighing and a huchhuchana a kind of hitch hitchana a hiccuping laugh and and he's he's laughing but he's also making other people laugh as i said his laughter is not derisive is not trying to humiliate an opponent but it rather deflects criticism it defends accusations it underscores his own wit uh, and talent with words and he keeps keeps the atmosphere friendly and once he's able to make kaka smile or to make some of the political dissidents uh, laugh he's Uh, half won them over so he um uh, joshi uses the the hindi muhavra hasito phasi huh? so once you've laughed you kind of you you're stuck you're done for uh, you're won over um as i said i think we start by laughing at netaji and we end, he ends up having the last laugh other because his notion of politics is obviously more accurate and effective than kakaji's um and defeats his intellectual and moral high ground or because it always seems to be able to co-opt and to defang opposition so if satire uh, is a, a, and i'm quoting abraham he has quoted in sikandar um a literary art of diminishing a subject by making it ridiculous and evoking towards it attitudes of amusement contempt or scorn and it uses laughter as a weapon and against a but existing up Like the work itself uh, which can be an individual a type of person a class a nation or even a whole race i rather follow mariam sikandar in conceptualizing netaji kahin not so much as a satire but as a parody a pleasurable self critical and tentative literary modality that distinguishes itself from the directed often unforgiving and unilateral nature of satire um so I, i think that this and other parodies of netaji are often you know complicit you know they are they are, they are affectionate uh, they seem to other the netaji as uncouth are revised you know devious but they rec recognize how indispensable he is to getting things done so my bit long conclusions uh, no and as I, so what can we draw from from parody huh? and how can we sort of position it well i think you draw you can draw a strong sense of familiarity of recognition huh? um maybe the beauty of seeing the logic of politics as it is as it works with its with its excitement its skills and fun not so politics as a game rather than as a you know an ideological battle um so the form of the dialogue between the middle class english and hindi educated intellectual kakaji and kakiji and netaji may suggest that this helps keeping you know both keeping the ideal proper sublime whatever we want to call it politics and the everyday corrupt politics apart but in fact everyday politics end up being all there is 
and the intellectual idealist uh, ends up looking like a fool, if at all useful as an element uh, in the general setting. So you can see here, you know, you have this sort of setup where, you know, Kakiji or Kakaji, you know, they will say, this is opportunistic, this is taking the, you know, country to the dogs, and, and Netaji just shrugs it off or, you know, uh, subverts it. Now in Rag Darbari, uh, I think you had a similar kind of, um, um, yeah, so this kind of double vision no? or, you know, or, or polarization between Ranganath, the, the young uh, graduate, uh, urban graduate and his relatives in the village. <clears throat> and it's interesting that it's the same what happens in, in, as, as in Netaji Kahini. So uh, as Sheila Shukla says, you know, the narrator says, He's occasionally given to pangs of conscience because his relatives are, you know, the sort of manipulators of power. And yet, uh, as you can see from this quote, Ranganath is not the conscience of the novel, but he himself is the butt of parody. Huh? So educated people in India occasionally are afflicted with a certain disease known as disease of conscience. If he had been with his friends, he would have sat at a coffee house, he would have delivered a long speech. He would have spoken a few sentences in faulty English, drank his coffee, felt satisfied, unburned, and overcried, overcome his faith, his crisis of faith. But he wasn't in the town, he was in the country, where in the words of Rupam Babu, his cousin, you can trust your own father, uh, or you wouldn't pay, no one would piss on your cut finger, let alone offer to bandage it. So, you know, he he can't, he can't unburden himself. Huh? And in fact, um, as his other cousin, Badri Palvan would put it, why worry about what nonsense Langnard gets up to? He's a town man, like big shit, not good for plastering the floor or for burning. No, not good for, for nothing, good for nothing. But, huh? so um, I want to say, I don't want to quite end here because on the one hand, it would seem that this kind of satire which exposes politics as it is, or everyday politics is status quo. Right? This is what it is. And you know, any kind of um, worry about it is just you know, the bleeding heart of the middle class intellectual. Um, and I want to end instead with a novel that I've talked about before, um, um, Tarpan by Shiv Murti, which is actually a serious novel, but in, which has a character of a Netaji called Bhaiji, which um, uh, I mean, is made into a film and it, Bhaiji there is a kind of, um, he's a Dalit, Dalit act, uh, activist and fixer. In the film he's played as a serious character. In the novel he's, he has this kind of, a, um, he's more, a, cuts more of a humorous figure hmm? as a sort of, a, you know, big ambitions, but you know, poor chappal type and, you know, um, not very courageous and so on and so on, not very heroic. Hmm? And just to remind, uh, well, to remind you, to tell you a little bit about the novel. So this is a novel about, you know, um, caste politics in the village. Um, there's a, a young Chamar girl who is almost uh, uh, raped by uh, a Brahmin boy, a, a sort of loafer in the village. Uh, the Dalits are very angry, but they're very, uh, the father, her father is reluctant to complain because he knows that, you know, this would be a, a great hassle for him. Uh, but then Bhaiji comes in, who's a Dalit activist and fixer, and would be Neta, and he urges the father to report the matter as rape, even if in fact he wasn't a rape, because he tells him that, you know, unless he reports it as rape, he, nothing will happen, the police will do nothing. And he reminds him that, you know, this is the a, a Varna Sangharsh, uh, not Varsh san, Varg Sangharsh, but Varna Sangharsh for Ijat, for Izzat, and it's more important than the struggle for Roti, and you know, one have we have to take advantage of the of the sort of the um, well, the scheduled tribes caste and scheduled tribes prevention of atrocities act. And in fact, although the first encounter with the everyday state when they go to report, uh, make an FIR, uh, they can't. The police treats them very badly. But Bhaiji doesn't give up. Huh? He starts mobilizing, uh, building alliances, mobilizing a local Muslim MLA. Um, and he exerts pressure on the police to act so that the loafer, you know, the, the Brahmin boy gets arrested just for a day, comes out, the situation seems to get uh, worse, but in fact, uh, Bhaiji again doesn't give up. Um, and, and they score a largely a symbolic victory that they managed to keep this Brahmin boy 
in jail and, and you know, um, in custody for a long time and to go through the town in handcuffs. Huh? Uh, and in fact, uh, the girl's brother recognizes that we made him grind the police mill for 60 days. He used to wander with, wander with his head high, bellowing like a bull. Now he's got black suit on his face. Huh? So this is an extraordinary victory. Um, so, as I say, although in the novel, he's a sort of Netaji slightly comical figure, his determination and cunning do achieve a true victory for the village Dalits and teach them politics and how to do Tana police successfully. So as Manish Thakur says, Netas are in an inalienable, inalienable, uh, inalienable presence in the Indian landscape, both urban and rural. And while Netas in Hindi literature are figures of parody, they, they do carry, uh, also carry real power. Um, now, Vinit, I want, just want to add one, one more thing. Vinit uh, Kumar, who uh, sort of suge was suggesting recently that in fact, the, the Netaji figure who was, you know, so generally popular, I mean, sort of butt of satire and parody uh, is less, less so nowadays and it's more individual Netas that are um, satirized uh, like here, but, you know, um, we can, I think there are still examples and, uh, of satire of the, of the Neta figure. Thank you. Thank you, Francesca. Um, <laughs> thank you. And Vineet, um, Vineet is here in the audience, isn't he? So um, very good that. Um, so let's just open the, um, the floor to discussion, I think. Um, and I'll look out for raised hands. Oh, there, uh, there are applause. There are applause from Lisa Mitchell. <laughs> and uh, who else? I saw another round of applause. <laughs> um, yes, what I was wondering while everyone gets gets their thoughts together um, is how does irony really, um, where does it figure in in the satirical genre as well as um, in the in the parody genre, or does it at all figure? Because that is such. It's been shown from political humor around the world that that is really the overwhelmingly significant um, trope through which people um, poke fun at politicians, especially when uh, when poking fun is dangerous. <laughs> um, so I suppose the question is both sort of um, diachronic and synchronic, you know, what role do you see from what you've been reading um, um, uh, irony playing and also have you observed there being more irony now that the political landscape has become more dangerous for outspoken people um, you know, in recent years, which it has done? Right, so, I mean, I think, um, and, and you think irony in terms of um, um, saying, I mean, we think of irony as, you know, saying one thing and meaning another or, mm. uh, yes. So, and yeah, relying on your audience to capture, to, to capture. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, but not well, predictable like, at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there's the irony of, um, as I said, of the political rhetoric. Huh? So that all the keywords, you know, seva, oh, right. uh, mm -hmm. janta, and uh, you know, tiag, and you know. I don't want to do this, or you know, we all have, uh, or um, is um, you know, they they basically mean the opposite of, um, mm. of what they. Um, and the more sort of pious and earnest uh, the words, the the more potential weight they have. Yeah. Um, the firmer the tongue can be in cheek, or. That. Uh, Well, I mean, I think, I, suppose, I mean, I suppose one thing that might be interesting for us is that, you know, those are the terms, you know, so how else do you speak of, yeah. uh, you know, um, you know, public service or, you know, or leading or, uh, uh, you know, um, 
of a, of or democracy huh? but you know so it's like like that you know so democracy is still the word but it's um, you know the meaning gets redefined huh? so democracy you know you don't really have another another word but uh, but the the meaning of that word is is completely redefined again you don't have an, really another word for for leader uh, it's neta but who is a neta so um, it's almost as if you know the the well so certainly all the rhetoric huh? but also even the political vocabulary is um, comes always with this all this this irony and uh, and using the you know using the um, I mean so I was I was struck and I mean I, I don't know if it is striking at all you know so the uh, um, all the all, all the money that is made is either minimized, so is this Rasampani, you know, it's two percent, you know, it's something very very minimal. Huh? And I suppose we, are, yes, we know that this is actually, you know, in fact, when the Kaka or Kaki asked, you know, what do you mean two lakhs or two, you know, two thousand, and it's you know either two lakhs or two crores, you know, so we are talking about, you know, the, the big money. Um, so maybe the self, yeah, the self-deprecatory, the the kind of the business-like nature of uh, so either either the language of renunciation or the language of democracy or the language of transaction. Huh? So everything seems to hide that actually there's something more going on there. Huh? So even the transaction is not just the transaction. Not so they're trying to say sorry. Speak, um, Sunny here, let me just close the curtain. Neta, Netaji is trying to say, oh, this is just a transaction, you know, there's nothing else to it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that itself also is ironic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, although that, of course, that's very different from um, irony. Um, he's diminishing the he, um, he's diminishing the moral import of what's going on, right? Whereas irony does work precisely when there is a lot of normative weight in a term. And um, it really does rely, so using words like seva and and um, jantandro or whatever is um, being tongue in cheek, whatever is thrust mm. in cheek, um, that does rely on people actually um, having another sense that is sort of pretty pious uh, that's attached to to these terms but, but isn't you know when he says rasan pani and so on is he not winking at you know you know winking at um, kakaji but also winking at us re readers you know that actually the meaning you know that we shouldn't take rasan pani and we percent literally but we know that this is mm -hmm. uh, you know part of his right. sort of performance isn't it mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Lisa Bjorkman has got a question. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for this. This was absolutely fascinating. Um, I have a, a, a kind of like a methodological question about, I mean, as an anthropologist, I'm not sure sort of how, to, like what to do with um, with these sorts of texts. So, so my imagination, like I want to treat him as an ethnographic figure. And so the kinds of questions that come to my mind are, well, you know, how did people read his smile? And, and obviously, so, you know, you have these interactions where you say, well, his laughter, both laughing and making people laugh is part of uh, the kind of, I think you call it his part of his ethics or part of his, um, you know, yeah, self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that, but then that happens on the screen. Um, which of course, and so I guess I'm just wondering like what what do we do or, or what do you do or how do you sort of assess the way that his viewership may or may not have been laughing as well? I mean, how do we understand sort of what this kind of, I mean, of course we can look at ratings and um, I guess it's just also because this is something that I'm struggling with methodologically in my own work right now, you know, there's this, and, and I think a lot of anthropologists are, are sort of grappling as well in the sort of age of, uh, sort of media intensive um, imaging, like how do we know how images land and how they, besides these sorts of, you know, the, the kind of 
So for instance, um, I read Karen Strassler's book recently, um, Demanding Images, about the sort of production and circulation of images. And we had a conversation and, and she has this um, discussion in one of her books about how, um, about like whether an image succeeds or an image doesn't succeed. I was wondering sort of how do we know if an image succeeds and and it seems like there's sort of two ways that one could go about this one you could kind of look at the sort of algorithm of retweeting and that would be similar to kind of like ratings how many people are watching and but we still don't know if they're retweeting it because they hated it or because they were you know and also we know that like click bots are out there kind of doing all kinds of stuff obviously not with Netaji in the time and space that you were working but for instance and then we've got this other idea where we can just sort of say well you know that that's a problematic thinking about audience reception itself introduces its own set of you know kind of problematics where we introduce the kind of individual interpreting subject when we've dethroned him anyway and so i guess i'm just wondering sort of what do we um given that i'm totally convinced and enchanted by your analysis like i'm not sure what to do with it ethnographically like how do i make sense of what people are doing with it well i mean so there's a lot in the, um, I mean, that, so the, the, let me maybe step back and think about, you know, the setting. So, you know, th there's a lot, of course, that is set up even here, as, as you say, you know, so Kakaji is a, you know, a journalist, an editor, and in the sketches, this is kind of completely naive character who says, really, you know, is that how it works? Or, uh, you know, he's shocked by politics as it is, you know, which of course, I mean, um, works um, as a, you know, works in the form of the dialogue and in this, you know, in a way, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still struggling to understand, but I, I, I don't want to give in to say, oh, yes, it's him, you know, he has the, you know, the, the moral high ground and is really shocked because it seems to me that that's also part of the performance that, you know, he's, uh, he's performing the naive middle class. Uh, mm -hmm. just as he has this Kakaji who is, you know, very brash and uncouth. Uh, I mean, he's uh, Batija who's, uh, you know, brash and uncouth, but he's always respectful for him, respectful towards him. So interestingly, he's set up as a, you know, or, I mean, I don't know if they are set up to be real nephew and, and uncle or it's just, you know, the terms that they call him themselves, but you know, by calling the middle class character Kakaji, he's always, you know, Kakaji is always in a position of, um, of respect. Huh? Uh, so he can uh, blame uh, Netaji for all this and that, and, Neta and Netaji is always respectful towards him. He doesn't say, you know, Bharmejao, you know, what do you know, you know, <laughs> stop uh, harassing me in this way. Um, so the, the fact that the Two characters are, are positioned in this way allows a certain, you know, um, exchange and accusation and recusation and the fun and, and of course the language is very very striking, you know, so that uh, uh, he is, um, you know, in the early eighties he's speaking this English of, you know, he's starting to travel abroad, he speaks English toward, you know, he's not he's not scared to speak in front of a foreign delegation, but his English is, you know, all over the place, and yet his key terms are setting and fitting and so on. Um, mm. So I, I take him very much as a character rather than, a, you know, as a sort of a, um, somebody who will have a, I mean, of course, he's, emblem, he's emblematic of uncouth politics, isn't it? Uh, uncouth politics that is not, uh, um, uh, and the, and the politicians that that you know are uh, have power and come from uh, you know the provinces or come from but he's not he's not otherwise particularly marked and then you know the fact that this was made for Durdashan uh, I mean that this appeared in the Times of India you know uh, weekly and then Durdashan I mean of course, Rudarshan is a sort of broad viewership. So again, it's kind of made to fit within a certain middle class um, uh, readership and viewership who we think will side with Kakaji. But my point, I suppose my only argument is that, you know, people remember his laughter, you know, he is a more, he's such a powerful character that he takes over kind of thing, you know, he, he is, uh, he's the one who laughs huh? and, and his laugh, you know, drowns everything else huh? um, 
so I think that, um, um, and, and in a way, again, I think that, and, and that for me, I suppose, is more interesting how something that appears to be so, uh, uh, to, to start with, to be so clearly, you know, the positions and the law and the morality, you know, the ethics so clearly mapped out because of the, of the nature of, of the form, um, yeah. actually ends up that, you know, yes, you're laughing, but you're laughing at somebody who's calling you stupid. You're laughing at somebody who maybe you think you're laughing down at, but actually he's more powerful than you are and somebody that you need to get anything done. So, you know, the position is not an easy one, I think, for, uh, yeah. for anybody, no? Yeah, I don't thanks. know if I've answered you. So it's, I think it's made to make us feel, conf you know, to laugh with, but but laugh with as we are laughed at, basically. Let's mm. mm. see, let's see, mm. and then Ram. Thanks, uh, Francesca. You you took me back to the 1980s when they were both serialized on television, right? On on Doordarshan. I don't know the literary. Uh, work at all, but uh, you know, I, I still remember a little bit of the television. Okay, so um, uh, I, and that's one of the things that I want to uh, ask you about. You know, th these are texts that exist in in two different formats, and uh, I wasn't exactly sure, especially when you're talking about the uh, you know Netaji Kahi slash Kakaji Kahi, what exactly the referent was. You know, because there is the Umpuri figure who is bringing a certain if you like, you know, sardam or, or a certain kind of characterization to the text, whereas uh, I don't know what it was like in the, uh, the original version at all. But my, my question really is about juxtaposition, both with other critiques, not, not very gentle critiques of politics, which were very much around, um, at least in Telugu, and I know uh, also in, in, in Tamil, Kannada, for instance, I don't know the uh, Hindi scene at all, but I'm assuming that the, the radical left is something that swept through the country and the, the trenchant critique of politics that comes from them, including in poetry and so on, which is uh, sometimes abusive, sometimes very direct, and nothing so gentle as this. Um, and, and so these, in some ways, are, are you know texts coming out of that time, and they also seem to be presenting, and I'm here basing my comment entirely on, on the uh, you know, uh, analysis that you presented us, uh, presenting us with some kind of an ethnographic collaborator, you know, almost like a native uh, you know, informant, who will tell us what this whole scene is, you know, as urban folk, as Kakaji type, you know, middle class, uh, uh, you know, uh, more, maybe more modern, more uh, uh, honest, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Of course, it's also ridiculing that, that uh, subject position. But so, so there is a certain, you know, um, uh, I, I mean, uh, if one were to juxtapose it in, you know, at a time when, uh, when they were, when it appeared that both the the radical intelli intelligentsia as well as you know sections of the population had pretty much had it with the politician. You know, here is a gentle sort of you know satire uh, uh, of of this uh, very figure, and also, especially in uh, uh, Netaji Kahi, it, it is a very harmless figure. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this seems completely out of sync with cinematic representations, which by this time had, you know, the villain, you know, the, the politician as villain. Uh, and, and if it was, uh, you know, satire, it was much more vicious, it was much more, you know, uh, it, you know uh, uh, direct. So uh, how does one, you know, uh, how, how does one locate this? And I, I can't help but, uh, especially Kakaji Kahi, you know, the fact that this was the man who gave us Buniyad and, and Hamlo, these were you know, developmental soaps, this is pretty much, you know, part of a national building project and so on. So, I mean, I'm looking at it more in terms of, you know, almost like the history of, uh, you know, <laughs> of a new state medium. Uh, although, I mean, I, I suppose your focus is on the literary uh, uh, version of it. But uh, uh, I don't know if it's incidental that both of them ended up on television, like so many other works that did end up on television, which became you know, which were mobilized for a certain kind of, if you like, post Rajiv Gandhi project, you know, uh, or, or, or a Rajiv era project of nation building. Um, and then they don't look so innocent and you know, so, so charming at all. You know, they, I mean, I, they, they almost like a, like a sinister uh, uh, papering over ploy. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm being very crudely. Yeah, no, no, no. Here, but, yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. No, yeah. Um, thank you very much. So, well, very good uh, points. I mean, uh, I've um, unfortunately, I mean, I, rem I remember the vaguely the Kakaji Kahin, but actually, it's not available on. I haven't found it online. I'd, I'd like to find it. There's only a 26 seconds clip of, uh, in fact, Ompuri laughing. Uh, so you know, mine was all based on the on the sketches uh, rather than the TV. I I, I, don't, I can't. Um, I think. I mean, and and what I can see of the Kaka figure in those 26 sec seconds is that he's a very kind of harm, you know, much less, uh, uh, you know, smaller, harmless man. And in fact, of course, Umpuri is older at the time, so there there must have been some changes from the written text to the to the TV version. And in fact, the first, uh, you know, the first slide was of a um, um, well. The Nukkarnata that is inside uh, Hallabol, um, you know, the film which has a uh, Netaji, you know, with a banana, and and the point of of showing that was that um, even that Netaji, although of course in in uh, in Nukkarnata, then the Netaji is you know exposed and and definitely laughed at, but he's also very good at words. He's trying, you know, he's he he's sort of, he's sort of trying to. Uh, you know, reverse the meaning of things. So there are similar um, strategies that the that the Netaji, uh, I mean Netaji, as a bit of uh, of satire, but also as a kind of uh, trying to to redefine or of or give a definition of politics. And and in fact, yeah, the slide that didn't work did refer to Nukarnata and one of the you know one of uh, so street theater of the nineteen seventies. And and if I think of one of the um, you know, one of the Jan Natyamanch, you know, the Safda Hashmi, uh, Nukarnata, you know, Hatyare that, you know, I read also with students, you know, there you have the Neta is a female uh, Neta, so, you know, very much a madam Indira Gandhi who doubles up as the commissioner of police, who doubles up as the Udyogpati, you know, so as you say, you know, the critique and the satire is very, you know, and, and, and that is a, a play about, um, how the Udyog Pati and the commissioner and the Neta all engineer, um, you know, very bloody um, uh, communal riots in Aligar, you know, and uh, so it's a very, as you say, it's not, it's not gentle at all, you know, and it's very clear and very hard hitting and so on. Um, to be honest, I mean, I, and I, I completely see your point, you know, is, is Manohar Sham Joshi then sort of in a way offering a more, as I say, status quo is or perhaps, you know, you know, let's laugh at this uh, Netaji, you know, gentle laughter. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I can see your point. I, I'm not sure that that's, I'm not sure that maybe that's the, that's the effect, but I don't think that was necessarily the intention. Huh? I mean, I, I think that we know, for example, within Hindi literature, you know, Shila Shukla, whom again, you could say, well, he's a, you know, he was a IAS officer and, you know, he was part of the system, but, you know, uh, Ragdar Bari was seen as very hard hitting, you know, as very kind of, okay, you may talk about politics and state building and all of that as, you know, the sort of, uh, um, um, well, heroic and, you know, um, sort of projects that we should all participate in and believe in, but this is what is going on really. Yeah? Is that what you're selling us as, uh, you know, development, as the state, you know? So um, I can see that, it, you know, you see, you know, it is different from uh, Nukarnatak also in being less of a farce perhaps. Huh? So Nukarnatak is, tends to be more farcical. But um, I would still see it as a critique of politics, not as a kind of um, adjustment with it, uh, so to say. Uh, but I think your point is absolutely well taken. Yeah, I should uh, make yeah th th those different positions very and and absolutely with cinema. Yeah, uh, certainly with uh, yeah. And in fact, I think this is quite interesting. Why? Yeah, I think maybe, maybe in fact, the relationship between the Neta in films, which is often a villain, uh, so both in both in parallel cinema, but also in mainstream cinema, at this time, the corrupt Neta is definitely a villain. Uh, what's the relationship between this, this representation and that? Yeah, thank you.
Thank you. Um, we've got Ram waiting and Chalapati after him. Ram, unmute yourself, please. Uh, yes. Uh, hi, Frank Jessica. Good morning. Um, or good afternoon. Um, really enjoyed uh, this talk on Netaji. And uh, I grew up watching uh, Netaji. It was, I think, probably at, at, its, at, at its time, it's prob probably one of the most popular TV shows ever. It had a huge audience, and I think it was um, it was it had, uh, I think uh, it became very popular, incredibly, incredibly popular at that time. And I'm sorry that there are no recordings of this uh, uh, this series, which is such a shame. Uh, you know, but that's the problem with the archives uh, in, in 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 our country. Um, um, so my question, I think I love your project on Netaji because I think it's such an important, powerful uh, category that travels uh, at different social levels and carry with it different sentiments. Uh, the, the, the term Netaji has different sentiments. Um, um, and, and I think it'll be, uh, and I think one of the sentiments that you're, uh, that the series and um, uh, the journalist author, the, the Hindi author, uh, Joshi captures is, the, is the, 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 the power and the lack of power of this netaji you know so uh, his sense of power but but at the same time complete lack of power so he's a he's a middleman that connects um, a certain kind of group to certain leaders um, but he's not sure that he can do that but he has to he has to sell that uh, that patina that i you know i have this i have the capacity but i at the same time people know that he doesn't but he has to then has so you see those characters in in North India. I mean, I've seen in, in various contexts. But I'm also interested uh, in figuring out what are the sentiments that get associated with the term Netaji in different contexts. So I think I think Manu, the Joshi here offers one context with a certain with the caricature of Netaji. But there are other ways in which we can think about the category Netaji. And that, and I'm also thinking here the term Bahanji that gets used for uh, Mayawati, you know? And I'm also thinking of the term Madam that was used for uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, you know, former prime minister. And I think these terms uh, carry with them a certain sentiments, a certain um, uh, association of dignity, respect, power. And I think, and how people use their tones to talk about, use their, uh, the, Thing, the tones in which they are used, the terms carry with it a certain powerful codified message between among the audience and between the audience and their leaders. And so I'm, I think in that sense, this, this discussion of Netaji, uh, the term, and that it has many sentiments. For example, in the context of uh, Mulayam Singh Yadav, there will be a different, set of, a different set of sentiments will be evoked. Um, and, uh, and then in the context of this, uh, you ended with this Dalit novel, but this novel about a Dalit character, where the, the, the Netaji is actually has a different set of sentiments, you know, uh, and that captures completely, cap kind of resonates what um, Anastasia and Srinivas were saying in the context of, uh, so, so there are different sentiments that I think we need to unpack uh, about the way our, these terms get used. And I think what we're trying to do is absolutely kind of captures that at one level of um, that there are certain kind of middlemen who have this, and that's what I think my sense is. That's what Joshi was trying to capture. But I'd be also interested to know uh, what would you think of uh, when it, when this term gets used uh, to describe and call uh, uh, Mulayam Singh Yadav. What sentiments it? Get. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Ram. Those are great uh, comments, and uh, um, I, I, probably you know more about the sentiments uh, uh, connected to um, to Mulayan Siyado than I do. But certainly, it's something that I will I will look at. And I, I, I think I love the way you talked about yeah, carrying different sentiments. Uh, I mean, as as um, because I suppose you know, and, and maybe you know, thinking about um, terms and our projects again, it's not. It's not so much about defining a category or defining a term, this is what it means, but how different 
you know, how, yes, Netaji, I mean, as my, Manish Thakur says, you know, it can be used as a, with great contempt, huh? and Netaji, or with great respect, or with, or, you know, or with this kind of affectionate, uh, mm, you know, um, um, irony. So mm -hmm. I think uh, the fact that we, we cannot just say, I mean, I, 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 I um, and, and so maybe even, tra yeah, tracing the, a few uses of, I mean, as you say, Behenji very much, isn't it? It can be used very, uh, very, very scathingly uh, mm -hmm. and, and with great instead respect and affection. So Anne itself wants to say, well, I'm a Neta, but I'm also your Behen. So, you know, not uh, sort of um, um, do away with some of the hierarchy. So, um, I suppose with, uh, you know, going back to the methodology question, we, uh, we are, we are, we are stri striving to capture the, um, you know, the, 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 the nuances and the particular, um, particular accents uh, of words and, and uses of terms, not just the term itself and what it means, but okay, here and here uh, and, um, uh, so I will, I will definitely um, follow this line. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, we've got Chalapati and Harleen was on, but she's actually disappeared. So she might come back. Uh, uh, Francesca, once again, uh, as always, uh, a fascinating and interesting paper. And uh, for a while, uh, I thought, you know, looking at your, the title of your presentation, I thought you were uh, teasing the Bengali Badralok. And then later I realized that actually it is not about uh, Subhash Chandra Bose, but about something else. So I think uh, discretion is the better part of valor. Bengali Bhattarlok still uh, rule the Indian academic world. Um, I also find it strange that, you know, I can follow much of what you have said, uh, considering that I'm a Tamil Shamanist, I can uh, actually follow so much of the Hindi um, you know, uh, Hindi writings and uh, the soap that you refer to, because we grew up at a time when uh, Doordarshan was uh, universal and you had no option but to actually watch these uh, serials. Uh, um, uh, uh, apart from this uh, Kakaji Kahin, and also because uh, Om Puri was such a major figure in Indian parallel cinema, so he that was a kind of makeover for him from uh, the kind of intense roles that he played to, you know, the kind of humor that was there. And also I remember uh, something like, you know, about 10 years after Kakaji Kahin was made, there was uh, the serial called G Mantriji, which was, uh, I think, adapted from Yes Minister, licensed from BBC. You now, the one big difference between these two for uh, somebody like me who didn't understand Hindi was that there was canned laughter used in uh, uh, G Mantri G, so which gave us a cue when we should laugh. Uh, so, but this apart, my point actually is uh, also draws from your references to Raag Darbari, which I've read in Tamil, which I think is one of probably one of the most important uh, Indian novels uh, that have been written in the last 50, 60 years. The disillusionment following independence is so, you know, uh, uh, humorously, but also, you know, very deeply, there is there's a great sense of you laugh, but also, you know, there is a great sense of uh, uh, grief and uh, sorrow and sadness that comes with that particular novel. Uh, why I draw attention to that is that, you know, the, your entire presentation, the impression that I get is that there is a strong democratic impulse which underlies all these uh, satirical uh, uh, writings and uh, satirical soaps. Why I find that interesting is the Tamil parallel that uh, I want to draw. Ram also mentioned usages like Behanji and Madam. You know? Madam always uh, reminds us of Jayalalitha and not Indra Gandhi. So the, the parallel that are not the parallel, the contrast that I want to draw in relation to Tamil. <coughs> this was this uh, journalist, playwright called Cho Ramasamy, 
many of you would be familiar with this name because uh, in the 80s and 90s he was the one figure who was quoted consistently consistently by the indian english media whenever anything was said about tamil nadu it was cho ram sami who was cited this cho ram sami was a playwright who believed uh, he was bernard shaw or uh, in fact superior to bernard shaw but the 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 the, the contrast is that he lampooned he caricatured tamil politics but it was a very strongly tainted by a elite brahminism and it targeted the dravidian movement the uh, the some of the tropes that he would use was the uh, the subaltern language that the dravidian movement employed that was pulled up for ridicule and then very clearly you know for certainly for somebody like me from south india in the kakaji kahin series i don't see alternate models of politicians whether it is a congress politician or a non congress probably a lohia it uh, politician they are not distinct they have the same attire they carry themselves in the same way i presume they use the same kind of language i am not an expert on that but here in the case of chor ramsami what he does is <coughs> he caricatures the dravidian politician with the pencil uh, line mustache and uh, the peculiar gopram like uh, hair style and the uh, the um, the form of pub- platform speaking using a neo classical term that came in for lampooning and critiquing which actually you know the underlying the theme is not an attack on dravidian movement but actually on popular politics on democratic impulses so my point is how deeply were the uh, producers and writers and actors of these uh, especially this particular serial and the other names you know i am not familiar with the other uh, names apart from shilal shukla and uh, this uh, joshi uh, what were their uh, political <coughs> excuse me i have a bad uh, cough uh, so what was their politics i mean my my sense is that there is a strong democratic impulse so what were their politics and how was it received is it received as a healthy critique of uh, contemporary politics or does it lead to a certain disillusionment with democracy itself <coughs> thank you thank you friends uh, thank you very much and i i i i love those comments and uh, i try to look up and and i think they are helpful in trying to um So become a bit more fine grained rather than say oh this is politic parody of the neta or this is just you know this is a satire of you know but be be more become more fine grained uh, which i i also definitely need to do more i i'm i get a say i mean again it's all my at the moment mediated through the sketches but i get a sense from what the neta ji says that uh, kakaji may be a jp follower or something at the time but i'm not sure i have to find out uh, what um, what uh, joshi's um, politics were um, i mean we know with reno that he had been you know uh, again a jp follower uh, but reno is is interesting because he's sort of a, i mean i love the second novel the parti parikata 1957 which is not otherwise a satirical novel but you know so so i suppose that's interesting so sometimes in Uh, Hindi writing, the writing is not necessarily satirical, but it becomes satirical when it comes to politics. You know, that's that was, I suppose, one part of my, you know, my argument that actually satire, as I think, uh, yeah, was it uh, Anastasia Shnivas saying, you know, is the has been the uh, the main main uh, no the main mode of of talking about politics, uh, um, unless we consider, I think, which I think we should do now, all the kind of mythological. 
um, you know, kind of writing, which in Hindi again goes on, you know, you get all the mythological novels written in the, you know, after independence and so on, also as a form of political writing, which I think we are much more aware of now, or we're aware during the, the sort of um, uh, anti-colonial movement, but, you know, somehow we lose track of that in the uh, post-independence time, that that is also a way of, of, of writing about politics. Um, and I don't know, I mean, I don't know, I, I, again, you probably I'll need some help in thinking about, I mean, there is mention of, I mean, Indira Gandhi is clearly criticized, but she's also, you know, or, or again, we are made to sort of, um, to laugh or to sort of, uh, um, yeah, not sort of take, take, um, take ironically, well, certainly we, we are supposed to take ironically all the kind of servilism towards Madame. Huh? So there's a sketch in which, you know, all the politicians are waiting at a party for, or at some MP's house for Madame to arrive and all that happens before she arrives. And then what happens when she arrives and after she leaves and, you know, so, but this still feels very much a sort of, um, you know, Congress one party rule with a few, <laughs> No, rather, so it is still sort of 70s, uh, 80s. But I think your point about is this, um, is this in a way a, a cry for democratic, you know, where is democratic politics that we were, you know, that we fought for or that we were promised or that we, we would like to take part of and this is all we, all we have instead. Uh, um, but certainly, as I say, certainly is different from from Dalit writing, but in a way that I don't yet quite, have not quite worked out. So I think that would be interesting too. Francesca, I think you and I should go and sit in a chai shop for a fortnight, mm. just morning till night. Um, and I would, I would love to think together about what's going on there because things are very funny, but they're very funny in a very different way that I genuinely have, um, would love to try to start getting a grasp on how, why the, the the, the hilarity of it is very different from what one has in a pub here or in a, in a, in a Ukrainian space or, you know, it's just very different. Um, and it's got a lot of nuance that isn't captured by categories like irony well, I think, or, you know, or even sort of, anyway, let's do that <laughs> when we can. Um, Harleen, Harleen Kaur has been waiting to ask a question. Um, Thank you for the wonderful presentation. Uh, so after like hearing what everyone was asking, I, I just one thing came to my mind. I wanted to know like how uh, this like very uh, kind of a funny characterization of this person could be because spaces of dissent were shrinking in a way, because these, uh, when we see 70s and 80s and with, you know, I'm just focusing on New Delhi. So I had like research on it. So I know more about uh, specifically about that space. So how, uh, you know, even uh, Saftar Hashmi's plays were not very well taken and how it ended up in his violent death by another very similar Netaji, right? So how this particular kind of narrative would be uh, more acceptable to the political, uh, to the politicians in a way that, you know, it would create a space of dissem dissemination of critique to a larger audience without being disrupted in a way. So like how it would be very much related to the kind of uh, places which are not being accessible anymore. So even the case of uh, like, there's one recent work on like brewing resistance on the Indian coffee house, right? Uh, so how these uh, spaces were shrinking or, or you could say that they were becoming like new spaces of dissent. So. No, thank you very much. And probably actually maybe we should also talk more and, you, and that, because my sense is that, um, so again, I, I suppose, and, and, and maybe again, you, you know more about it, but it seems to me it's very much depends on, uh, on, 
on the on the um, on the platform and on you know the audience and how you're doing it so um my sense is that you know hatiare or you know the, the place of Gian Natia Manch, I mean it's not as if they would be censored in 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 writing but you know going and uh, performing in particular places that was very different from having you know publishing a a satirical, humorous uh, column in the in Times of India. I mean, none of you know Shila Shukla. I mean, there's no sense of or or Renu or Manohar Sham Joshi. I mean, there's no sense of them being censored as such, or, or even I think particularly a, a self censoring. But yes, they are they are writing and moving in very different places or spaces than uh, you know street theatre groups or you know demonstrations they're not you know they're not politically you know aligned with uh, with groups that are being targeted or, or I mean political parties that are being targeted so um, I don't I mean I think we think now and I think it's it seems to be a very different situation doesn't it no I mean and again uh, I mean Vinit is not here but I mean the set we got a sense that, okay, what was possible in 2017, is it still possible now? But again, is it still possible, you know, on video, widely shared, you know, that kind of, uh, or in-person performances, or, you know, as I mean, as you know, uh, you know, what was it, Lalo, Lalo Yada, who said, you know, people in English can write what they want, you know, I don't care, you know, it's a, as long as it's in, uh, you know, it's not in Hindi and it's not my readers who are, you know, my voters who are reading it, you know, I don't care about what is being written. So it's, I think now there's a sense that, okay, there are some spaces for dissent, but people are being more careful now than they were even a few years ago. And I, I mean, you may, maybe f either people who were, who remember those times or who, um, or like you who are studying them, my sense is that after in emergency ended again, you know, there's not that sense of, you know, great censorship of, you know, literature or, you know, print as such. It's more other spaces that would get the, bear the brunt of police or, yeah, gundas or netas kind of ire. Huh? I don't know what you think. Thank you so much for sharing your. <laughs> okay, um, I think the hands have come down. Thank you, Francesca, so very much for um, opening an entire sub nook of, of the project, which I really hope that uh, we will pursue. Um, Lisa Bjorkman has been very interested in humor, um, so have I, and I really think we should, um, once we start being able, going to India, and hopefully that won't be too far away, um, we can go and explore some of these spaces ethnographically, and hopefully that will help to shed light, new kinds of light onto, um, onto the historical and literary sources. So thank you and uh, see you. Thank all. you for your wonderful uh, questions. Uh, thank you, you, you oh. very, very much appreciated. Uh, okay. thank, thank you, you Francesca. Bye. Thank you, Francesca, lovely to see you. Lovely to see you, see you next week. Okay. Bye.